Hey guys, Steve here from Memory Express. We are in the EVGA suite and we got a special treat for you. As you guys know, EVGA is known for lifelike gaming. But how about lifelike audio? We're gonna take a look at the all new audio card here. I'm here actually with Andy from Audio Note. How are you doing today, Andy? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. Excellent, I'm glad to hear that. So let's talk a little more about this new product you guys have teamed up with and a little more about the audio card here. I'll give you a quick run through the uh, basic features of it. It's a little bit different. In fact, it uses a USB uh, uh, PCI to USB converter, so we can run a USB input. So it's essentially like a USB uh, card, um, external DAC, but internal. The reason for that is so we can use um, a well-established um, uh, driver with Ethercon that's ACO compatible, which means it'll work not just with FUBAR, with a game, but also with pro audio solutions like um, FL Studio, anything like that. No problems with drivers, it's an established format. Um, from there, we've got some uh, it's a triple regulated power supply, taking clean power for the audio circuitry from the uh, ATX power supply. Um, you can see the regulators under here. There's a little heat sink that normally would sit on there, but we've taken it off so you can have a look underneath. It's also, uh, this heat sink acts as screening for the um, DA converter there which is an AKM chip, AK4493, and it's capable of, uh, in this format, uh, 24384, it's a 32-bit internal architecture, and also native DSD, which is very unusual for an uh, internal card. In fact, you can do uh, DSD256. Um, it's, the audio is in fully balanced mode, pro audio type mode, all the way through to the um, balance to single ended converter at the end. And we're using um, Audio Note's own special resistors here, which are made using a batch process, so we can control the uh, film thickness. It's very much thicker than a, um, a normal SMD type resistor. It means lower noise, uh, lower distortion, and we're using a larger format, which are S um, three hole instead of SMD. Uh, and we work with Rubicon. We go out there every year to work the, uh, to develop these uh, audio capacitors. They're lower noise, low ESR, uh, low microphone, and so on. Um, the output op amp chip is uh, it's an AD8056, it's low noise, but the main reason we chose it is for sound quality, but if you want to change it, pop it out. But buying a car, change the tyres. <laughs> cool. um, from there we tap it out, We've got an, uh, here is a uh, software controlled analog volume control. That means it's easy to set the volume in your headphones if you're using earbuds or studio quality headphones, a different mm -hmm. sensitivity. But it's important for DSD because you can't control DSD volume by um, the software volume control. You need to do it by analog. Uh, so that's why we have that here. This is the um, uh, headphone power amp section. It's quite big. Uh, a couple of big power amp chips. Again, a swappable op amp. So if you want to change the tone. And uh, somebody online asked about the output impedance. To be honest, it's so low it's not even worth talking about because it's unusual that the, op amp, the uh, power amp is actually connected direct to the output socket. There's no standoff resistor at all. Uh, this is the uh, quarter inch jack there. So the output impedance is very, very low. It controls the uh, headphones, gives really impactful bass. It's not flappy and boomy. It's solid, you know, gunfire, bang. No. Um, the uh, line in, which is there, is uh, studio quality. It's 24384 using an AKM AK5572. Uh, a to D converter, again some fancy parts around there, it's balanced input um, internally, we use a single entity balanced converter inside. And finally we have a, a mic input, uh, which has its own preamp, it's a separate uh, input, so there's actually four input channels, and it has a mic boost, you can work with a, a dynamic mic, SM57 or uh, you know, a boom mic on your headset. Um, and there's a GUI, you can adjust the gain of it a little bit on board. And then we have a toss link out, so a pass through. And the, the GUI has some other little tweaks for the uh, digital filters on the um, uh, A to D converter and the DA converter. There's some audio file tweaks, so you can change the uh, frequency response a little bit. And on there we have a, um, a graphic as well, a graphic EQ. Nice. Oh, wow. There you go. This, yeah. is, this is one piece of hardware. Like, this is crazy. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. What we wanted to do is, first of all, create solid hardware. From there, you can start building if we want to add DSP or something later on, you know. Maybe we'll add some 3D emulation, who knows? You know, see yeah. where it goes, or headphone corrections, or something like that. We can add that later on. But you've got to start with the hardware, otherwise you're going nowhere. Yeah. So, audiophiles, rejoice. First we were overclocking for gamers. Now, okay, we're overclocking your audio. Yeah. This is really cool. When are we going to be seeing this product hit the market? Uh, 16th. 16th this month. Guys. It's coming out now. 16th this month. So your ears will be pleased. Thank you so much, Andy. I really appreciate your input. Thanks.
All right, guys, this is Steve from CS at EVGAC. Stay tuned for our other videos where we highlight the RTX 2060s, the Kingpin, and a little bit more. See you guys in the next video. I'm licensed with these, so that's why I do it. So. <laughs>